to the Upside Up Podcast. On this episode, we wanted to talk about decisions for a little bit. We need to have like a big disagreement sometime and like yell at each other over the show. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's do that. You've talked up this joke, buddy. You have, Every time you've seen me, you said, have you heard the joke yet? So I'm excited to hear this. This better not be disappointing. No, I'm a prairie dog expert. <laughs> I love prairie dogs. We've established this in our own friendship. No life. I'm going to phone a friend. Who are you going to phone? Amber. Amber? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're just a little bit klutzy, and so I can Oh, see yeah, even better, guys. Listen to this guy. <laughs> Do you disagree with anything I just said? And now, here's your host, Jeremy Neus and Garrett Horn. Good morning. Good hey. E- <laughs> good morning, good <laughs> evening, or good afternoon. Welcome to the Upside Up Podcast, my friends. My name is Jeremy, and I'm joined by the man who doesn't forget dates, and furthermore is unforgettable, Garrett Horn. How is it going, sir? Going great, Jeremy. That was a good intro. Thanks. Every time, you're so creative. Uh, I tell you what, I sit down on my computer and I'm like, I think of something this time. Like, <laughs> nope, you've that before. Use that before. <clears throat> no. All right, we're, we're really happy to have you on the show today. Today on the show, we're going to talk about decisions and uh, how they can be a blessing rather than a burden. Uh, we'll have the Clash of the Wits. Uh, we're going to play a game, and I'm super excited about that one. I spent... I'm uh, going to win. Yeah. Uh, no. Yes. Um, but I spent... Uh, quite a bit of time writing that game up, so I'm super excited to see how it goes. We're going to have listener questions, as always, and the new segment, uh, Compelling Contemplations. We're super excited about that one, especially this week. We're going to have a special guest join us, and that will be revealed at the time uh, for that segment. But before we begin, it is time for the Upside Up Headlines. Uh, first of all, we got iTunes review uh, from VH Roll. I have no idea who this is, but uh, it says this. The title was "This one is up there." And this person writes, "This is a great podcast for all ages. It is extremely refreshing to see young guys putting out content that is thought-provoking, funny, and entertaining, all in one package." I look forward to all their future endeavors. So that was that was a great review. We really, really appreciate that. Thank you, VH Roll. Yeah, VH Roll, whoever you would be. Uh, if, if Tell us who you are if, uh, if you're listening to the show. We'd love to know who that came from. Over to you, Garrett. Yeah, we have a, a blooper video out, which uh, you can watch if you want to. Or not. I don't care. But it's out to go uh, digest. There you go. I can't think of a better word than digest. <laughs> 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 digest our video we would love it no but uh but yeah we, we've got that out and uh hopefully you'll enjoy that thirdly and uh I don't, I don't know if it's most importantly but we have t-shirts now available and those will be on sale until june 10th this is this may be the only time we print these t-shirts i don't know they may come back um at a later date but at least for the foreseeable future this is the one time we're going to make these so if you want a t-shirt they are twelve dollars get in contact with one of us uh that does anything with the show and we will take down your name and your order the money does need to be collected by june 10th and then we will place the order we'll get the bulk back and then we'll let you know when your t-shirt's in and we'll hand it to you so your your t-shirt should be in your hands around um i guess the end of june beginning of july is kind of where we're tentatively thinking right now i'll be married by then yeah you will be married by then so that will be exciting but um again twelve dollars a piece and if you want to see the design it's on our facebook it's on our twitter and or you could just come up and ask us uh what that looks like so uh do not hesitate to order one of those t-shirts we're really excited about that so yeah they look really good yeah really good they do i'm super excited so All right, with the headlines out of the way, uh, we wanted to talk about decisions for a little bit. And this is something that's kind of been in my mind for a little bit. I hear a lot of people talk about how they hate to make decisions or how there are even just little day-to-day things that annoy them that they have to make choices all the time. And that's something that I've thought about. And I think that it's, you know, it's not appreciating the freedom that we have. Uh, in this country to be able to make the decisions, make choices day to day, or even like the big ones, like, like Garrett, you're, you're about to make the decision to get married or you've made the decision to get married. I guess I should say you're about to say your vows. So that's, that's a wonderful blessing that you get to choose who you're going to marry. A King doesn't like shove a woman on you or whatever. And you have to, you have to marry that person. That's right. So, uh, I, 
there's such a blessing that we can make decisions in our life. Most importantly, the decision to, to follow Christ, to be a Christian, most important decision you'll make in your life. And, uh, so I don't know, just kind of maybe a little pet peeve of mine when people say, uh, "Ah, I'm so terrible at making choices. I'm so terrible at making decisions. A little story. One time I was with, um, some of the younger people at church and we went to Sonic and there was a lady there or a, a young woman there who was trying to decide what shake she wanted to order from Sonic. And <laughs> she, she looked there and she was like, Oh, I'm so terrible at making decisions. I don't think this person listens. I'm not speaking bad about this person anyway, <laughs> but, uh, some people, you know, make decisions easier than others. Right. Uh, some people are, can just take the plunge. Other people have to really consider all the options, which is understandable. But this person, it was a milkshake. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's not that hard of a decision. And she looked and she goes, Oh, I have an app. It makes a decision for me. And she plugged in flavors of milkshakes into it. And it randomly chooses one. It makes the decision for you. Well, that's one way to go through life. Yeah, I know. There's a, there's a way to go through, like, choose your career through an app. I mean, they say there's an app for everything, but I think, uh, I, I don't know. I think that's, that's kind of crazy, but yeah, uh, I don't know. I was, was thinking about this on the way over here, thinking about exactly what I wanted to say. And I just think that we need to treasure and not take for granted the fact that we get to make decisions in our lives someone had to die for the freedoms that we have in this country and people all over the world don't have the decision, don't have the freedoms we do to choose what they want to be mm -hmm. when they grow up. So do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah. Well, I think that the, the freedom that we have was, uh, fought for and blood was spilled so that we can have choice. We have the ability, um, to even do things like get an education. You know, there's a lot of countries where, you know, even at a young age, there's no education, your work, you know, from the time you're old enough to walk to the time you die, I yeah. mean, that's your life is work and try to get food throughout the day. We live in a country where um, we have an overabundance of everything, whatever you want to be. Yeah, pretty much you can be that. Um, I mean, there's some there's some hard times that come. I mean, you have to, you know, if you want to have a good career, you have to go to college, pay for college, stuff like that, which is setback, but you should even be grateful that you have the opportunity to do stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, definitely, I think that you should be thankful for freedom, not just of choice, but of, of everything that you have. Um, just just be thankful for, for that we live in a country where we're able to freely choose to do things. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that was, that was well put. The things like the career, I think of Blues Clues growing up. <laughs> Blues Clues was my favorite. I, I was a Blues Clues fanatic when I was growing up. And the one thing that uh, they always said on the show is you can be anything you want to be. And I realize that that's a general statement. I would not say that you can be every anything you want to be. I don't think that if you're a male, you can be a female. I don't think that that's something. How hateful of you. Yeah. <laughs> well, excuse me, but that's, that's my opinion. <laughs> and I'm entitled to it, but freely freely that's right because someone fought you chose to make that decision that's right way to go jeremy <laughs> thank you i chose to say those words but uh that i guess i guess what i'm trying to say is in something like your career you have the choice to be anything you want to be in this world what a blessing that is i think of these people that like you were talking about who worked from the time that they could walk until the day that they die just so they could put food on the table. These people are oftentimes agricultural or, or blacksmiths, whatever. But we don't have to do that. My, my family doesn't own, own a farm, and I don't have to look at that farm and realize that's where I have to work for the rest of my life. Another TV reference is kind of weird, but <laughs> I hate the show The Waltons. But I thought of it when I was thinking about this because the oldest, I don't remember his name. I want to say it's something like John. John I Boy. I don't think it's John Boy. Oh, sorry. Maybe I don't know the Walton League. I don't like it. Maybe it is John Boy. I don't know. But on on the show, they have a uh, sawmill, and it's a family-owned thing. It's been uh, in the family for generations. And he wanted to be a writer. He, was, he wasn't passionate about the sawmill. And he had the choice. Yes, it was Harder Times. That was a, a show that was set in the Depression, I believe. But he had the option through a lot of hard work to be a writer. 
And I, I just think that that's powerful. So even the day-to-day things that you complain about having to choose to what you want to eat that morning. I mean, what a blessing that is. They say that uh, uh, too much of any of any good thing can be a bad thing. I guess too much freedom to make choices can be a burden. But I think it's your attitude that you look at look at it with. So uh, maybe just treasure and don't take for granted the fact that you get to choose. Because one day you might not get, get to choose. Just well, let me hear you complain about choosing. Well, it's it's easier said than done. It's, it's a lot easier <laughs> to look at a look at a microphone and say it. But you know that that should be an aim of ours. Anything? Any last words on that, buddy? No, I agree with everything you said. Good, that's right. Because I'm smart. We need to have like a big disagreement sometime and like yell at each other over the. Show. Okay, okay. <laughs> let's do that. We'll have to. We'll have to. Let's just talk about Alabama and Auburn passionately. Let's not be good fans. Let's be like. Okay. The fans that we want to be in our hearts. Iron Bowl time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe we'll have to do that. I don't know. I don't know if that'd be entertaining to listen to or not. <laughs> all right. For so, some people. Yeah. For some people. Not not for most, I don't think. Uh, all right. So with all that being said, we'll kind of move on from that. It is time for the Clash of the Wits. And uh, Stephen is winning six to five. But before Stephen uh, presents his joke... Asher Collins came up to me, and I told you about this, Garrett, but I wanted to share it on the show. He came up to me one day on a Wednesday night. I was walking back from class, and he was talking about my podcast, and he was like, I have a joke for the show. And I was like, well, what's that? And he said, where do homeschoolers live? And first of all, I was I was intrigued just at the word homeschooler, <laughs> but he says, at school. And I just think, I just think that's... <laughs> I, I don't mean, remember you telling me that. Yeah, you don't remember? Oh, yeah, that's I, good. I'm pretty sure I told you, but yeah, I mean, especially for... However old he is, I would hate to guess, but you know, he's, he's a little tight. So, uh, just to come up with that joke, I, I, I thought that was worthy of a shout out. Way to go, Asher. That's right. Thanks for listening, buddy. All right, Stephen, what do you have for us? How about a joke for Mother's Day? So the other day, a mom told her daughter a joke to which her daughter rolled her eyes and said, mom, stop. You are not funny. You don't make good jokes. Her mother looked at her calmly and just said, well, I made you. Oh, <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> that was cold. That was cold. Yeah. So, for those that don't know, we're recording that this episode the day after Mother's Day. I don't know um, when this episode exactly will come out, but just for some context there. So, all right, that was pretty good. That was a cold one. That was that was pretty classic, Stephen. I would say that, that a lot of his jokes have been have been like that. Yeah. All right, Justin, you've talked up this joke, buddy. You have, every time you see me, you said, have you heard the joke yet? So I'm excited to hear this. This better not be disappointing. What do you got, buddy? What is the worst part about Robin Hood's house? It has a little John. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. That okay. was worthy of the talk. <laughs> that was pretty funny. <laughs> Can Asher win? Yeah. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, that would that'd be quite the turn of events. I think, I think that, I think Justin, I think Justin won. Better. But uh, I think that you know they were both pretty decent. But that, that was pretty funny. <laughs> I was like, I was concerned I wouldn't understand his joke because I haven't seen the movie Robin Hood, but I understood it. <laughs> Thankfully, I'm cultured. You never seen? You still haven't seen Robin Hood? No, man. I, I've wanted to, but I never. Amber never. doesn't like it, so every time we're over there, she's I don't like, think I don't want to watch it. Yeah, I don't think Alyssa <laughs> wants to watch it either. But uh, anyway. Yeah, say lovey. All right, so the quiz show that we're gonna play, uh, I'm I'm excited about. This. I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win. So to win, buddy, you've got to get. You can miss up to three. I've got ten, uh-huh. so you can get a C. I won't miss and any. pass. Okay, if if you get all these right, buddy, I will shake your hand. Boy, I will shake it. I probably won't get any right. No, so you got to. Well, I don't know if that's fair. Let's say let's say six. Maybe you got to get six so it's right. Hard. Well, I mean, they're just random facts. You you shouldn't know any of these. Okay. So what this what what I did here is I'm calling it the the rabbit hole quiz show. What I did is I just went on the internet and I searched something and I got a fact from it, and then that fact led to another fact, and it and it just goes on and on and on. So the rabbit hole quiz show. Nice name. Thanks. I thought about it a long time. <laughs> All right. So number one, buddy, the largest prairie dog town was found to be a hundred miles long. Where was this town found? Oklahoma. A. Northwest <laughs> Montana. <laughs> Oklahoma. I just, I just guess somewhere. <laughs> All right. Northwest Montana. A. B. West Texas. 
C, South New Mexico, or D, North South Canada? D's not supposed to make sense. Uh, which one was Southwest Texas? There wasn't a Southwest Texas. There's the one in Texas. <laughs> okay, B, West Texas. That is correct, sir. I knew it because they live out west. <laughs> the, great job. But buddy. not all the way to New Mexico. <laughs> not all the way to New Mexico. All right. That was, that was, I'm a prairie dog expert. <laughs> I love prairie dogs. We've established this in our own friendship. But uh, anyway, good job. So you got one right. Told that, you. that is one. So I'm got, I got to remember this. Do I get any life lines? Uh, no. No life lines. I'm going to phone a friend. Who are you going to phone? Amber. Amber? <laughs> okay. <laughs> she is your friend. All right, number two, West Texas is a city populated by a whopping 2,807 people in McClellan County, Texas. I hope I pronounced that right. The town is named after T.M. West, the first what of the city? What was his occupation? A, postmaster, B, sheriff, C, coroner, or D, butcher? Say those again. All right. Post ma- postmaster, sheriff, coroner, or butcher? See, it seems too easy. Coroner? No. What did you say? No, it's, no I'm saying C, it, it seems too easy. Oh, C, the choice. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. It seems gotcha. too okay. easy. Okay, I, I, thought you were answering number, I thought you were answering letter C. I okay. really need a lifeline here. <laughs> it's multiple choice, man. In this, in this by the way, D is, is a joke all the time. Okay. All right, so I got a one in three chance every yeah. time. 33.33333333. Let's see. Dead air? Gonna give me anything here? Uh, Sheriff. Incorrect. The corner. No, it's postmaster. the postmaster. Who names a town after a postmaster? Exactly. That's why it's so that underpopulated. Yeah. <laughs> That's why. That's why it's underpopulated. Okay, so number three, Roswell Beardsley of North Lansing, uh, excuse me, New York is on record as the longest serving postmaster of the same post office. So he's worked at the same post office all his life, or he did. How long did he serve? A, 53 years, B, 38 years, C, 74 years, or D, 100 years? C. C, 74 years. That is correct, I knew sir. It. That is too I can ro- tell by the way you said it. <laughs> Not really? <laughs> really? No. I, was, I thought I said them all the same. <laughs> no. Okay, so he worked from 1828 to 1902. Quite a run there for Mr. Beardsley. Notice Beardsley. Number four. The largest beard recorded in, in Guinness <laughs> was the, the beard of Hans in Langseth of Norway. It was measured at at the time of his burial in Iowa at 19... In <laughs> Excuse me. In 1927 after 15 years uh, living in the United States. It was presented. It was presented to the Smithsonian Institute. I'll get through this question in a second. How long was his beard? A. Seventeen point seventeen feet six inches. B. Nine feet five inches. C. Twenty feet eleven inches. Or D. Fifty five feet four inches. A. A. Seventeen feet six inches is correct. So you got three right, buddy. Yeah, that's a long beard, dude. And y'all need to look this guy up. It, it looks doesn't look crazy. as good as mine. It doesn't look as good as yours because it's 17 feet long. I wonder how long it took to wash it. Or did he wash it? Probably not. Ugh. All right. So he was from Norway. Norway, you say? Norway. Lutfisk is a popular Norwegian meal. It is made from aged stockfish or dried slash salted whitefish and lye. Ugh. It is gelatinous in texture. I hear it's pretty Uh, nasty. Lye is also used to make what? A, essential oils. B, plastics. C, soap. Or D, bad decisions. C, soap. Soap, final answer. Yes, sir. How'd you get that one? Lye soap. I've heard of it. You've you've heard of lye soap? Yeah. Okay, so is that three or four? Four. I'm cultured. That's four. I am cultured. Yes, you are. According to GoodWorksWellness.com, soap made by combining animal fats with wood ash was used by which people? A. Egyptians, B. Romans, C. Israelites, or D. Canadians? (laughs) I was going to say Canadians. (laughs) Same again. A. Egyptians, B. Romans, C. Israelites, or D. Canadians? And what was the question? What was the question? What is lie used uh, not, not no, I'm sorry. wrong Where question. Soap, so, excuse me. Soap was made by combining animal fats with wood ash. 
by which people? What's B? Romans. B. Romans is incorrect. It is Egyptians. Egyptians. That's my next choice. (laughs) (laughs) I would hope so. (laughs) I hope it wouldn't be Canadians. Okay, number seven. You've got four right, correct? All right. I got to keep track of this. The pyramids were originally covered with highly polished stones that reflected the sun's lights and made this the pyramid shine like a jewel. What were these stones made of? A. Copper, B. Quartz, C. Limestone, or D. Diamonds? B. Quartz. B. Quartz is incorrect. Oh, it is limestone. I knew it. I, I was like, in my head, I couldn't decide. Between quartz, quartz and limestone. And limestone. Yeah. Well, I, I thought that was interesting. I'm having a meltdown. Yeah. Still got four right. You got three chances to get the last two. All right. <laughs> All right, Highway 72 is one of the major roads in Limestone County, Alabama, across all of North Alabama. Which of the following cities did the original route of Highway 72 pass through? A. Owens Crossroads, B. uh, Excuse me, Tuscumbia, C. Triana, or D. Birmingham? I don't know. You're not supposed to know. Uh, Owens Crossroads. Owens Crossroads is incorrect. Oh, uh, you are cheating. <laughs> I looked these up, buddy. It's Tuscumbia. Uh, I couldn't even name where Tuscumbia is on a map. It's it, it's actually kind of in between Rogersville and Florence. I, I know because I, I was looking at a, a hiking trail there. I'm so. going to lose. All right. Tuscumbia was the answer to the last question. Helen Keller, born in Tuscumbia, Alabama, is one of Alabama's most famous people. You might mo- know this one, buddy. You might not know, or you may know if you're Garrett, that she was friends with which famous author? A. Louisa May Alcott, B. F. Scott Fitzgerald, C. Mark Twain, or D. William Shakespeare? Mark Twain. Mark Twain is correct, sir. So that is five. It comes down to the last one. I knew that from somewhere in the back of my mind for some reason. I know. When I saw it on the internet, I was like, I knew that. (laughs) At, At some point, I knew that. Okay, in light of Tom Sawyer... Uh, Mark, one of Mark Twain's famous stories. White picket fences have been a staple of stereotypical suburban life in America. Until the introduction of advertising in the 1980s, they traditionally also surrounded what structure? A. Cricket fields. B. Baseball fields. C. Golf courses. Or D. Lacrosse fields. Okay, say it one more time. Uh, say what? The question. The whole question? Yeah. Uh, in light of Tom Sawyer, white picket fences have been a staple uh, of America, suburbia, blah, blah, blah. Until the introduction of advertising in the 1980s, they traditionally also surrounded... Baseball fields. Baseball fields is his answer. Drum roll, please. The answer is A, cricket fields. There's no cricket fields in the United States! <laughs> Sure there is. No, there's not. I don't believe it. I, I want to recount. And I, I didn't say that they were in the United States. Well, I said it was. Well, that wasn't part of the question. <laughs> you can well, Mark Twain threw me off because he's an American author. Yeah. You well, cheated. You did, did that on purpose. But what did... <laughs> You're getting so accusing. I hate losing. Yeah. Well, I won, guys. Congratulations to me. Yeah, you had all the answers, and I still almost won. How does that make you feel? Well, you almost got six right. You got 50 percent right congratulations look yeah that's pretty good honestly because these were these were some really random things what did you think of that did you enjoy that? i enjoyed that i wish i had got one more right yeah well hey that was that was that was pretty good you know what i thought when i said baseball was you know how they have all the advertisements yeah. around the field yeah you knew i'd say that no actually i didn't um the when i was reading the question uh the, the second time you asked me to i said i was looking until the introduction of advertising in 1980s i was like I feel like that would give it away because I'm pretty sure advertising was probably on baseball fields before the 1980s. Well, I thought about that, but then I was like, there are no cricket fields in the United States anywhere. And then, because for some reason I was thinking, well, it was the United States. I, I, I want to be clear. I never said that there were cricket fields in the United States. I know, okay, I know. Okay. But for some reason, I was thinking it was, it was an American question because of Mark Twain. The tie in was Mark Twain. Uh, I know, to Tom I know. Sawyer. It's my fault, yeah. but. That's all. I, in my mind, I was like, like United States, right? No cricket fields. Maybe yeah. there is somewhere. Yeah, I, I feel like there's got to the, be cricket fields. There. It probably has a picket fence around it too. To be honest, I mean, yeah. and I was I was uh, hesitant about that question because I was like, is that really true? Because I did read that one off of Wikipedia, and I was like, I looked it up, and they really do surround 
with white picket fences. Hmm. I thought that was cool. So anyway, there's there's the rabbit hole quiz show, and maybe we'll have to uh, we'll have to do that again. I thought that was pretty fun. Maybe you'll have to make it next time. But I don't want it losing, so. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm okay with it. <laughs> Not with losing, with you losing. All right. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Let's get into the listener questions now. We got quite a few of them this time as well, so we really appreciate the feedback. Gable Duke asked, how do you like your eggs, Garrett? He didn't ask you spe- I feel like I've had, we've had this question before. How do you like your eggs? I don't think so. Um, we may have talked about it all. Over that. easy. Over easy. Runny. And then you get some toast and soak up the yolk. Really? Yeah. That is not how I like it. I like I like it scrambled the best. Um, and if it can be made into an omelet, I want omelet it to be made into an omelet. To me, scram- I like scrambled eggs. I mean, I'll eat them, but to me, it takes away some of the flavor if you scramble it. Really? Yeah. I feel like... The texture is different, and that makes the flavor feel different. Feel different? That makes the flavor feel different. I mean, the- yeah, <laughs> in a way. I guess... <laughs> I guess so. In a word. (laughs) All right. So uh, thank you, Gable, for that one. Matthew asks, my little brother, what is your favorite meal of the day? Mm, It depends. Um, During work, during the work week, I like lunch. But during the weekend, I like to go to dinner. Uh But breakfast is not. You don't eat breakfast. I hardly ever eat breakfast. But I do like breakfast food. Okay. But I hardly ever eat breakfast. Gotcha. Well, I would say that. I like breakfast a good bit, but it it can be such a hassle. You know, I don't want to give time for breakfast. I just want to sleep a little bit longer. Yeah. Lunch is a frustrating meal to me because I never know, like, if I'm out of the house, I never know. I I have to plan to bring a lunch or I have to spend money to buy a lunch. It's like a lose-lose situation. (laughs) So uh, I don't really like lunch but it's probably my favorite one to eat because it's usually the one i'm most hungry for on a work day yeah um but that's how i am yeah but dinner dinner is probably my favorite if i had to say Uh, especially when my mommy cooks it oh uh at Stephen d russell on twitter he asked what talent or ability don't you have that you wish you have or wish you did have excuse me and i would say i wish i was a better singer that, that's something that I think would be cool. I wish I could jump a little bit higher. Um, but honestly, I kind of wish that I was more artistic. Like, I wish I could draw better or paint better. Even if it was graphic design, I feel like I, I really wish I had that. So just off the top of my head, those. And I also wish I was better at, like, being mechanical. I wish I had a more mechanical mind, I guess. Caleb's got a really mechanical mind, and I just... I just, I just don't, man. I just don't. What about you? I wish I could be a great public speaker, like oh, get up really? in front of a crowd and just like present something powerfully. Powerfully, like I, I don't think I'm a bad public speaker, but I, right. I've always, like, I guess admire people who can get up and captivate an audience, right? When they have something exciting to talk about. Um, I think it's impressive when they can captivate an audience when they don't have anything exciting to talk yeah. about. <laughs> Or uh, dunking a basketball would yeah, be one. That's one of mine too. Um, I wish I was f- a little bit faster. We want to be we want to uh, be great athletes, don't we? Yeah, and I don't know. I say Me- you're you're fairly mechanically minded. I would. Say. Uh, not really. <laughs> not really. <laughs> no. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's a false impression. I mean, no, no, I'm really not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really bad with mechanical stuff. What do you mean mechanical stuff? Like. I wish I was better at working on cars. I wish I understood yeah. cars better. I know a little bit about cars just from working with my dad, but I hate I, I, this. I hate doing it. Really? It's so compact in there. I hate oh, maneuver I, trying to maneuver in there. Well, yeah, just knowing you, you, you don't have the greatest maybe dexterity is the word. Yeah, yeah which it, it's not a fault. It's yeah, just who it's, you are. Yeah, thanks for insulting me on You're national welcome. podcast radio. A national podcast radio. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Well, I don't have great sincerity, guys. Let's tell all our secrets. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you're just a little bit klutzy, and so I can. Oh, see how the yeah, even better, guys. Listen to this guy. <laughs> Do you disagree with anything I just said? I wouldn't put it as klutzy. I'm just not the smoothest person, is what I would say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let me back up, then, Mr. Suave. <laughs> Okay, Garrett, let me back up. You're not you're not super suave, if I could put it that way. Oh, that's way. better. Okay. Okay, all right. All right, moving <laughs> on. Thank you, Stephen, for that question. 
at Caleb Valander, or excuse me, CP Valander on Twitter. He asks, beautiful weather, but you can't go outside. Or it's rainy, but you have to be out all day. Which would you rather? I think I think I'd rather be inside on a beautiful day yeah, than be out in the rain. Definitely. I, I, I guess for me, I, I like the outdoors a lot, but I'm not like a super outdoorsy person. For some people, they would be like, "I'd rather be outside in the rain if it means I get to be outside." But that's just that's not how I think. No, I would I would definitely rather be inside. I could watch a movie or yeah. play video games. I can enjoy something. the beauty from. Or out, watch out. my aquarium. There you go. Watch but it. I got to make a shout out to Caleb's aquarium. I'm sitting here looking at it. It is really nice. I'm kind of jealous of it. Yeah. It's really nice. So yeah. way to go, Caleb. Yeah. It's it's up and coming. That's for yeah. sure. Little um, segue there to. Yeah. <laughs> to aquar- what? Well. To aquariums? I, I made the wrong word again. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you made the wrong word. I love I, it. I did it again. <laughs> All right, uh, N C underscore Johnson on Twitter. Who's uh, that? Oh, Natalie. Natalie. Johnson. Yeah, she's she's given us a couple now, so we appreciate that. She said, "Given my record, the likelihood of this uh, having been asked is high, but hot dog or hamburger?" And I can't for sh- I can't say for sure we've has. had it. Maybe we have, but we'll answer it anyway. I go hamburger all day. Hamburger all day long. Yeah, I think I remember answering this. I think I do too. Uh, but that, it's a good question, nonetheless. We'll answer it twice. We don't hate you. <laughs> No, we don't hate you. All right. Arden Collins asked, bow ties or neckties? Which I know, Garrett, you don't want to wear either of them. But which one Which one are you going to wear? Yeah, I mean, I wore a tie yesterday, and I got cross-examined for it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so, I sure did cross-examine uh, you. Um, Necktie, but I'm wearing a bow tie for the wedding. So. Yeah, but that, that's more Garrett. I mean, not Garrett. That's more Amber's choice, right? Yeah. yeah. But I'm kind of excited to see what it looks like. Yeah, I think you chill look good in a bow tie, but uh, I would I would go bow ties. Just I I just really like them, but uh, I do like the art of tying a necktie, and I think that it's underappreciated the many different ways and different knots you can tie. Uh, I think that uh, I think that people should really learn other. I knots. can only tie one. Yeah, just get it tied. I think I can tie two or three, but uh, and then. I think it's just a lot lost art, but thank you, Arden, for a great question. Uh, Andrew Bullington asked us, our previous guest, he asked us a really good question. It's going to require a little thought, buddy. You need to pull off a heist. You team up five people, but they have to be Disney characters. Mm. Who who do you choose? While you think about that, I've had some time to think about this. Do uh. Okay, or you can answer. Well, I'm not answering. I'm asking. Uh, I mean, can superheroes count? I mean, because they're Marvel, Disney, yes. So all the Avengers. Well, that's that. I think that we should try to go Disney original characters because, well, at least mostly original because the Marvel characters were there before Disney bought out Marvel. Yeah, but they're Disney now. I'm just they're saying. Disney now. So I agree. But let's just for the sake of argument, let's let's take out Star Wars and let's take out Marvel. Oh man, I forgot Star Wars too. <laughs> it's now Disney. So uh, I think I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go. Um, I, I'm going Baymax. I got. Oh, uh, that's Marvel. That is. is Marvel. Yes. It is Marvel. Ooh, that's unfortunate. Oh, uh, you lose. Uh, yes, I lost. You really want to win today? <laughs> yeah, I got one over on him. <laughs> Oh, oh, brother. All right. So I thought about this, and I can't remember anyone I thought. Um, I feel like I had... Oh, I want Sven from Frozen, the, the the moose or whatever. And I also want the horse on Tangled. Those two are trusty uh, companions. I think that they would be valuable. Honestly, I want Flynn Rider. I was going with Flynn. Um, I think... Let's see. I need somebody with brawn. So maybe, hmm. Why don't you give a couple while I think? I go Flynn Rider. That's my that was my first thought, and then um, there's another. Oh, Robin Hood. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. He can shoot people. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, Buzz Lightyear, just because he's pretty cool. Ooh, I didn't even think about Toy Story. Yeah, I like that. Um, let's see. Oh, Hercules is my fourth one. Yeah, I Hercules. One. Hercules would be a good one. Um, and I'm going. I'm going the. Uh, I'm torn, but two Mulan characters. Either the the training dude who Mulan falls in love with, 
in love with in the first one. I either want him or I want the track, the dragon, the little dragon. That, yeah, well, I would take the bad guy in Mulan if I could make. I mean, he's, it's gonna be a heist, right? And he is Villains a are, killer. Yeah. Um. So, are you taking him? Yeah. So you got Flynn. You got Hercules, right? I take Hercules. Okay, you've got the the bad guy in Mulan. Robin Hood. Robin Hood. You need one more. Mickey. He's a mastermind. Okay, Mickey's a mastermind. I think that's pretty good. That, that was a great question. I I was really impressed when I read that. So thank you, Andrew. That was good. I want to give a quick shout out before compelling contemplations uh, to Catherine Neely. A couple, maybe a month ago, she listened to I believe all eighteen episodes, or eighteen straight episodes in a week's time. And the fact that she listened to you and I talk that much, that's almost like, that's probably close to 15, if not more hours of listening. Lots of time on your hands, huh? Well, I think she was doing, I think <laughs> she kidding. was uh, working at, as like at H&R Block or something doing taxes. So yes, a lot of time on her hands. But the fact that she listened to all those, big shout out to you. We, we certainly appreciate that. That's pretty cool. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So, all right. So the, the final... Uh, uh, segment of the show and one we're really excited about is compelling contemplations and this week as I mentioned we're going to have a special guest and that special guest is Katie Sexton uh, and she is joining us now how are you I'm doing all right how are y'all we're doing great it's great to have you on the show this you're our first ever phone interview so congratulations Woo-hoo! on that you're our first ever female as well this is so cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm a little excited about this so um now, in this compelling contemplations segment, we've talked about how we uh, these are just random random thoughts, random observations. Don't really have can't really stretch it into a whole segment. So just a, a couple minutes. So we're going to talk about something that Katie actually text, texted me when I was running this idea by her, and it's something she noticed. And what was that? What did you tell me? Okay, um, so the, the the brand of you know shampoos and stuff, herbal essences. Uh, herbal essences, right? Yeah, I think it's plural. I think it has an S on the end. Anyway, um, regardless, um, if I, I don't know, I was thinking about the word herbal and how you could pronounce it differently because you know the English language has all sorts of pronunciations. For right, different right. Things. It's weird. Thing. So first of all, take the word, uh, take the letter H. You know, normally you pronounce it right. It's not silent. Right, so, right. Makes so the huh sound. Yeah, exactly. Good, good job, Garrett. Um, <laughs> Also, um, the letter E, you know, we can pronounce it different ways, but one way we can pronounce it is, um, as in, um, you know, eh. periwinkle keeps coming to my head. <laughs> periwinkle. Okay. Air I don't know winkle. why. Yeah. Uh huh. Air. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So it, it's pronounced like that. Um, and then the A, we could pronounce it like the word, um, argue, you know? Okay. So, argue. So, uh huh. Yeah, I'm just trying to get you the pronunciation that I'm about to use. Right, right, understand. In, so instead of pronouncing it um, herbal essences, you could you could potentially pronounce it hairball essences, which oh, that, that, sounds really unappealing for a name of shampoo. Right, so, for for a shampoo especially. But it right. it does go in your hair. It does. Can't but argue hairball. that. I, I feel like that makes it uh, ironic as opposed to making it logical. Yeah. I mean, the word hairball, I mean, the word hair, that's, that's an okay word, you know, but right. the word hairball, nobody likes the word hairball. I mean, yeah, <laughs> so, sounds like a cat medicine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just, oh, anyway, that... so I, was, I was just thinking about that word one day. I was looking at a shampoo bottle or something and I was like, hmm. And so I texted Jeremy that. There you go. Randomly. There you go. Uh, well, that's how we roll. Yeah, that's right. I appreciate you, uh, you you sharing that with it. I I was thinking about. I knew what you were going to say to pull back the curtain a little bit. I knew what you're going to say, and I was thinking of things that I have mispronounced or read differently. And in the Gospel of John, when Jesus is being crucified, it says a uh, title that they wrote a title uh, there. And I have for whatever I don't know why, but for whatever reason, that one time. Every time I read the Gospel of John where it reads that, I always read that tittle. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like a jot or a tittle, you know, that's yeah. elsewhere in the Bible. But every time I read that one, I always say tittle. I don't, so that's one thing that I will try not to read in public because I know I'll go up there and they wrote a tittle. You know this. You know the song Daily the Cross-Eyed Bear? Uh-huh. 
My dad used to think that song said daily the cross-eyed bear. The, the cross-eyed, <laughs> the cross-eyed, like he's yeah. got a, like a vision. When problem. he was a little kid, yeah, <laughs> that's wow. hilarious. That's so <laughs> that funny. Is... Well, uh, we really appreciate you joining us uh, to to share that with us, so. Katie. Where are you broadcasting from? I am sitting in my room at my new house. Woo! At a new I, house. I, I wanted you to say that. Congratulations. We're giving okay. you a clap. So, all right. Well, I uh, hope you enjoy your house. We've got to run, but thank you for joining us today on the show. Well, thank you all. All right. See you later. Roll Tide. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> say it back. Roll Tide. Bye. <laughs> all right. So, we really appreciate Katie joining us for that. Hopefully, you enjoyed that. If you have any co- compelling contemplations... Please give one of us a text, and uh, we will do exactly what we just did with Katie, and we, we'll have you on the show, and you can talk about whatever contemplation you had, and we, we'll just have a little conversation about just it. Just a nice little contemplation conversation. Contemplation conversation. I love it. I love it. Uh, I love alliteration. So contact us in, uh, about that, and do not be shy. We don't, we don't mind your voice being on this program at all, and I realize everyone hates their voice when they hear it recorded. You sound great. So please, uh, please join us for that. Except you. Except for except that's right. Me. That is yeah. Right. I got you back for your comment earlier, Mister Dexterity. <laughs> Mister Dexterity, you did get me back. My apologies. All right. So we want to thank Katie for joining us. We want to thank her for her excellent work on the show, writing and playing our music. We want to thank Kevin for helping us record that music. We want to thank Justin and Stephen for providing jokes and Asher this week. A big shout out to him. Asher, you're the real winner. That's right. You're the real MVP. (laughs) That's right. I think Justin wins unless you can sway us the other way, but that will mean we've got a tie ball game on our hands. And if you think Asher won, comment hundreds of times that Asher won. Yes, I'd love it. Love it. All right, so we want to thank our team of hard, uh, selfless workers. Uh, Caleb is our head producer and editor. He's doing a lot for the show. Uh, we really appreciate him. Garrett wants to give him a high five. Caleb is ignoring him. There yeah. we go. There's a high five. Uh, Corbin has done a lot for the T-shirts, graphic design. We really appreciate him. Assistant producer Joshua, voiceover artist Justin. I personally want to thank Garrett for helping me on this show. Love doing it with you, buddy. And I want to thank you, the listener, for listening to us. We do it for y'all. Well, I do it a little bit for me. I really enjoy it myself. But we, we enjoy that you enjoy the content. So uh, if you didn't like it, we would stop. So, But uh, we really appreciate you for listening. We don't take that lightly. Make a difference uh, in the life of someone and set an example for what a Christian should be. And we'll see you next time. Peace. Thanks for listening. Leave a comment on iTunes. Subscribe on YouTube. Like us on Facebook. And follow us on Twitter. I said no, 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 no. no. I said no, no. Okay. Oh, we have a caller. Hello? Hey, Hello? who is this? You've reached the Upside Up podcast. Hey. Hey. Testing, testing. testing. Who is this? We're super excited. We're super excited, excited to have you on. <laughs> um, This is testing my show. Some more. Testing some more. Oh, it's your show. Oh, it's your show. Now. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. I think that's fine. Let me hear the jokes now, though. Okay. Oh, yeah, no. ah. oh, my ears. You're no evil. <laughs> <laughs> what is the worst part oh, I just, I just about Robin Hood's oh, no. house? Oh, no. It has a little John. I'm going to sing as loud as I can right now. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, are we recording? Yeah. Oh, no. We got to have them, man. It's the best part of the show. Not that part. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. Good. Can you hear me now? Good. Can you hear me now? Good. Not much. I'm going to get some neon Tetris now. I the Official announcement. <laughs>